Secondly, because men are performance oriented, they prefer action, do less talk, right? The opposite is the woman. The women prefer interaction, not action. They want more talk. Why more talk? Because they're deeply relational. Can you talk about a relationship when there's no communication taking place? For a woman, a relationship exists if there's regular communication. If there's no regular communication, you only have an official relationship, but you don't have a real one because there's no communication going on. That's why women want to talk because they want a relationship. They want to hear what's in your heart, hear what's in your mind. They will get involved in everything you do, and they will, you know, sa ating uh, Tagalog, usi sa usi. They don't want, oh, how was your day? Okay, fine. What happened? Ah, uh, well, we had a good time. What do you mean? Can you tell me more specifics? <laughs> Women want the details because they want to know what's going on in your life because they have a relationship with you. They want to know how they can help you, how she can support you, how she can, you know, uh, be a part of your life because she wants a relationship. That's why they want to get involved because they want a relationship. They want interaction, interaction, interaction because that's what makes them alive. That's what makes them alive. Okay? Men value privacy, right? Why? Please give me some space. I've got to finish this work. Great. And I always remind why wives, give your husband some space. I mean, if he says, please don't get involved, respect that. Let him do his job, okay? But at the same time, you know, women uh, sometimes uh, violate the privacy of men because they are different. They value intimacy. They value involvement. Why? Because they're deeply relational creatures. They want to get involved. They want to be intimate with you. They want to know you inside out. They want to know what's in your thoughts. Because they hunger for a relationship. A real one. Not a superficial one. Not a, you know, a fake one. They want a real relationship with you. You understand women now? Okay? Men think and talk topically, right? Women think and talk relationally. I'll give you an example. A man has, was trying to uh, make up for his lack of time for his wife. When he began to realize one day, you know, I've not been giving enough time with my wife. So on one day, he, he invited his wife to go out for, to a ice cream parlor because her wife loves to eat ice cream. So she went to the best ice cream parlor, the ice cream parlor that her wife, his wife usually goes to, and said, you order anything you want, you can have it. I just want you to enjoy it. I want to spend time with you, okay? And so the wife looked through, all, through the menu and she chose the most expensive ice cream in the house. And yet the packaging was, uh, from the, in the eyes of them, was too simple to be expensive. It was an outrageous price for him. So he said, honey, I want this. And he looked at it. He looked at the picture. He looked at the price. It doesn't seem to match. And so he said, this ice cream is way too expensive. He was only thinking and, and talking topically. He's just talking about the price, right? Right? Just about the price. No other insinuation, no other implication, just about the price because it's just out, outraged by the discrepancy between the picture of the product and the price. So outrageous. And so, you know, when, when she said, this ice cream is too expensive, you know, it's, you know what the wife did? She stood up and walked out. Now, can you tell me why the wife walked out? Can you tell me why? I mean, the man, man was just being honest about himself, right? He just assesses things rationally. Price, product, doesn't seem too much. It's too much. How did it get to the wife? How did it get across to the wife? It's different. To the wife, it's not topical. It's relational. Everything you say, listen to this secret, so you understand women more. Women always interpret your words and your actions through a grid. And this grid asks the question, how does my husband 
see my worth as a woman. Through what he said, through what he's doing to me, what does it reveal about how he values me as a woman, as his wife? Everything goes to that grid. Why? Because she's relational. Relational. You understand that? So when your wife says, what's up a dress, you know, in the uh, department store, how do I look? You don't like the color, right? But she's, she likes it. So what do you say? I really don't like the color. You know how that gets to a woman through her greed? You're saying you don't like her. That's how she gets that. Because everything that you say is interpreted personally in the eyes of a woman. If you don't understand that, you better understand it because all women are like that. And listen to this. Sorry guys, God designed them that way. Because God wants you to learn to be sensitive to the feelings of another human being. And God wants you to be sensitive to that most important relationship of your life. Just as God is very sensitive to us in our needs. Just as God even meets your needs even before, without your asking. God is a very thoughtful God. Just like a woman. And he's sensitive to everything. He said, not e all the hair of your head are numbered, he said in the Gospels. That's how much I care about you. Do you understand that? The woman reflects that dimension of God's sensitivity to us. And God wants us to become like him in that way, learning to be sensitive to the feelings of others. Do you understand this? You're not asking, oh, pastor, I'm giving up. That's too much for me as a man. Well, you need to understand what is your concept of manhood in the first place. Okay? Now listen to this. Men primarily are driven by the need for significance. Everything we do, almost everything we do, we do because we, I want to feel significant, right? Right? It's for my ego. Women, on the other hand, are primarily driven by the need for security. They want to see to it that everything in the, in the needs of the home are all met, children's needs are all met, and they start complaining when certain needs are not being met because they don't feel secure. And by the way, women marry primarily because they believe this man, they can feel more secure with this man than with the other guy. They marry primarily for security. And that's why women are drawn to men who have some kind of strength or power because it gives them some sense of security. That's a ba one of the basic needs of women, okay? So everything they do, they're driven in order to feel more secure. And we need to be sensitive to that as men. Okay, men seek emotional release through activity, right? And we already have going through a lot of stress, emotional pain. Ah, if you go out basketball, you know, go out, you know, go to places, do something, do something. For diversion, golf, you know, whatever. Especially when you're all pressed up with a lot of, uh, you know, uh, stress. So we usually find release through activity. Women, on the other hand, seek emotional release through ventilation. They want to talk it out with someone. So if the husband, it's not a good listener. You'll share your wife, you'll find somebody else to talk with about your problems. Because that's how they get it off their chest. They have to talk about it because they're relational. They want to find release through relating with somebody whom he, she says can understand what she's going through and she has to relate by telling the story so that she feels she's not alone in what she's carrying because she's relational. She wants somebody to relate with her in her struggles. That's what women are. You understand that? But the problem is that when women begin to ventilate with their husbands, what's the problem? They can be harsh. <laughs> right? Husbands, right? They can be harsh because they're so, you call that, they're so honest about their feelings. Most men are not very honest about their feelings. Because they're more relational, they're more honest about their feelings, and they'll tell you as it is. How they feel, you will sense it in their voice and how they relate with you. They're just too transparent. 
Because they want a genuine relationship, not a plastic one. They want a relationship, a real one. They understand that, okay? And as men, you know, when we are, you know, easily hurt <laughs> and offended by mean words from our wife, well, we tend to shut down the ventilation, right? And try to defend ourselves, try to uh, rationalize, try to explain, try, okay, let's solve the problem. That one was not finished yet. Let's, let me tell you this. Women, when they ventilate, all they need is somebody to listen. They don't need solutions yet. As men, because we're, you know, we are focused on achieving, solving, succeeding, when the wife ventilates, okay, let's solve this problem right now. That's not what she's looking for. And you try to butt in and try to solve the problem, the more she gets mad. Did you notice that? The more she gets upset. Can you just listen? She will say to you. You know why? Because all she needs is to get that off her chest and listen to this. That's why I enjoy counseling with women because I just listen. And by the end of the listening, when they have all of that off their chest, they begin to think more clearly. The cloud begins to dissipate. The emotions have been released. And now you can talk with them more rationally. When they get it off their chest. You understand that? You know, even though you don't in intend to hurt your woman, when she gets hurt, don't try to justify the issue is she was hurt, period. And even though you did not mean it, okay, maybe it's how I said it, I'm sorry. I did not mean to. Okay? But don't try to say, that's not what I meant. You should, you should not get hurt. You know, I did not mean it that way. Oh, it's a useless argument. It's not going to work. Women are emotional because they're more relational. When they get hurt, they're hurt. Simply apologize. Maybe you did not mean it, but maybe in the way I said it, maybe the way I acted in front of you, maybe the tone of my voice, I'm sorry. I apologize. But that's not what I meant. You understand that? You see what we, are, we, are, what God, what, what we have to learn? To learn to be sensitive. You know why? Because as men, if you don't develop sensitivity to others, it's very hard to build strong and lasting relationships with people. And that's, the relational is very important. This is this. Success, somebody said, is the product of having right relationships with people and having relationships with the right people. Let me repeat that. Success is the product of having right relationships with people and having relationships with the right people. If you have the right people working with you, you'll be successful. And if you know how to build right relationships with those people, you'll be really successful. And you need to be sensitive to people so that you can work effectively with them. You know, their idiosyncrasies, their weaknesses, their tendencies. If you are sensitive to that, you can really know how to motivate these people well so they perform better for you because you understand them, because you know how to be sensitive. You understand this, okay? So what do you do when the wife speaks mean words to you and she's ventilating? Well, that's where the real man comes out, right? I was telling men, you know, the real test of a great soldier is not when you finish graduating from PNA. You're not yet a, a real soldier after you graduate. When does a soldier become a real soldier? When he's tested in the real, not the simulated, in the real battlefield where bullets go through him. Right? And how is a real test soldier tested no matter how wounded you are? And if you can still make it, you will continue the battle. Especially when the victory there is critical to the victory of your side. You understand that? Real men can take the bullets without complaining. Listen to this. When you remain gentle to your wife, even when she is harsh with you, you bring your wife to the point that ultimately she will be guilty about how she deals with you because you remain gentle with her. You understand that? But if you also overreact to her being harsh and you become harsh to her, she begins to lose respect in you. Why? Because in her mind, she can handle you. She can, you know, she can carry you away. I mean, you're, you're so weak in her eyes. 
I can affect you so much. I need a man that I can lean on as a solid wall. Not a man that when you lean on it, it begins to crumble. When she ventilates, she's longing for a release from the pain. And a man will learn to be patient and remain gentle even when she's harsh with you. Because when she sees that, the more she will respect you. Because hindi kanya kaya. You are not under her power. Because you're able to stand strong. Even when she says, get out, leave me. You say, okay, I will step out of the room. But I will not leave you. Get out! I don't want to see your face again! It's okay, Han. Stay in the room. I'll stay out here. I will not leave you. She will in admire you for that. If there is something that women look for in men is strength that enables us to handle her emotions in a way that we are not overcome by her emotions. We remain strong. And we are the one who are able to handle her emotions better. That is the kind of man that most women would really admire. It's strength in the man. You understand that? You see, gentleness is not weakness. Gentleness is power under control. Gentleness is strength under restraint. That's gentleness. And women need that from their men when they're ventilating. Later on, they won't be as mean to you because they've learned to respect you. Men perceive things rationally. That's why we love to explain. When me women are hurt, stop explaining. Just say sorry. That's it. Let him get over the hurt. And later on, she will be more open to listen to your explanation. But not at the heat of her hurt. Not at the time. Okay? Men relate, uh, women tend to perceive things intuitively, okay? Sometimes a woman's decision may not be rational from a man's point of view, but many times she's right. She sees things differently, intuitively. She can sense things, okay? Sometimes she can even sense what is the right thing to do in any given situation. They do things more intuitively. Okay, men relate rationally. Men say, I think women relate more emotionally. I feel. I hope you understand the woman. As an essentially relational and security sensitive being, the woman has four basic needs. The big A, attention. Why do you think the perfume, cosmetic, and fashion industry are earning billions of dollars every year? What basic need in a woman are those industries meeting? The need for attention. The need for a woman to feel beautiful and be beautiful, you know why? Because she wants her man's attention. When your wife goes to the beauty parlor and she gets on with that new hairstyle and you fail to notice it, you're in trouble. I mean, she spent 3,000 pesos just making herself beautiful and everybody has noticed her, but you failed to notice. Oh my. <laughs> She's doing that because she wants your attention. You never gave it to her anyway, so, ah, oh, failure. <laughs> <laughs> now listen to this. Now listen to this. A survey interviewing around 50,000 women in America was done many years ago to answer an interview question that goes like this. What is your most admired trait in a man? Okay? And the survey revealed that there is one particular trait that is most consistent in almost all of those women as the top choice. You want to know what was the first in the list? The most admired trait that all women find in men, that even if you look like a beast before a beauty, but if you have that quality, even if you look like a beast, any woman will fall in love with you. <laughs> That's the million dollar question. 
So for those who are courting their women, uh, this is something worth developing in yourself. But be sure you don't do it just for courtship. Be sure it's going to be a lifetime habit. Because your wife will feel cheated thinking that you're like this and then you marry her and later on, she, you're not that person anymore. You understand that? The number one most admired trait that women find in men is thoughtfulness. Thoughtfulness. You know what thoughtfulness means? You anticipate the woman's needs without her asking you. You always make her feel that she, you're remembering her. You're at job, she's at home, and you text her, Han, I miss you. I'm really working hard here, but I'm thinking of you. Or you go home with roses, you go home with chocolates, you see that she's, you know, she's been complaining about you know, the, 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 uh, the, the, the uh, cooking, cooking pot. The next day you're there with a new cooking pot without her asking you. Oh, She'll, you'll make her fall in love with you all the time. You understand that? Anticipating her needs and giving it to her before she even asks you. Do you know why women, you know, you should have thought of that. You should have bought me this. Am I a prophet? <laughs> yeah, we almost say, but my wife, you tell me what you need. Do I have to tell you all the time? Shouldn't you know that? I'm sorry, my wife, my, my, my love, I'm not a prophet. I cannot see everything. You've got to tell me. If you don't tell me, I don't know it. That's the problem. I love you. Sounds, that sounds familiar to you. <laughs> you know why women are like that? Because they're longing for your thoughtfulness. They're longing for more attention. They don't want that. It's only when they talk that you give them attention. They want that even if they're not talking to you, you're still giving them attention and thinking about their needs. Again, getting ready to meet their needs without her talking to you about it. She will love you more. She will admire you more. She will be passionate with you more when you are thoughtful. Sometimes we say, you know, my dear, that's too much to us. You know, I'm a busy person. That's the problem. You're so busy. Too busy for me. When you were courting me, you had all the time. Where's the time now? Now that I married you. Ouch. Right? Are you getting how women think? That's how they think. Because they're so relational. Okay? They need affection, you know? Words. Women need words. If you have to say it many times, I love you, they want to hear it. You have to say it. But some of these men say, I, you, know, you, you know that I love you. I've been working so hard for this family, for you. That's how I show you I love you. By me, what I do. I want words, my dear. Words. But when we, men speak too many words but have less action, they'll prefer the action. But they want words. Women are sensitive to the words of a man they love. They long for those words. Words that affirm her. The other is the look. You know, women during puberty, that's from age uh, 13 up to around age 21, women tend to have a 180 degrees visual range. Okay. Uh, Ruel, can you sit looking there? Yeah. If, say, Ruel is a woman, she's not, okay? <laughs> and I'm here, and I'm looking at her, She's looking that way, and she's in the puberty stage. She will begin to feel that I'm looking at her at this angle. And if I'm looking at her boobs or looking at her legs, she already knows it. How, does, how sensitive women are during puberty. They are so sensitive to how men look at them. Okay, so when you look at them, sometimes a woman just to check will say, you know, look at the watch and, you know, do like that. Ah, yeah. She's looking at me. <laughs> They're very sensitive. I remember a time, oh, okay, one more story, right? I, I was invited to teach in a class in UST. The teacher, a psychology class, was a priest, a young priest, and I was asked to speak about marriage from this book of Genesis. So I talk about that. I also talk about, you know, how women are very sensitive to the look of men. You know, when I ask the girls in the class, is that true women? Yeah! And all the men, you know, were looking like that. And, uh, at the end of that, the, I noticed the, the priest, the young priest, was blushing when I was talking about that. 
And so after my, my, my lecture, he came to the front and he said, we would like to thank Pastor Dave. That was a wonderful exposition of Genesis 2. And to be honest, Pastor, I learned a lot. And then she looked at the class and she said, to the girls in my class, I would like to ask your forgiveness. If ever you notice I was looking at you at an angle, and then some of you say, yes, <laughs> Father. <laughs> yes, Father, we forgive you. <laughs> Why? Because she con he confessed, sometimes she looks at the legs and the boobs. <laughs> Okay, they're sensitive to the look of a man. That's when you're out on a date with your wife or your girlfriend, please don't look anywhere else, especially when there are other women around, because that's really hurting to your, to your partner. She wants all her eyes on you, all your eyes on her, okay? The touch, women are sensitive to the touch of the touch of the man they love. That's why when there's a need, you know, if you're married, especially when you're married, for those who are still single, be careful about this, okay? It's not yet the time, okay? Only when there's a real you know, a real struggle going on, a tragedy happened in the family, you can just console. The touch is very important, okay? Affirmation, women need to be affirmed. Just to say thank you, just to say, Ma, you're so beautiful today as always, you know? Wow, you look gorgeous in the dress. And I remember I warned you as men, never compliment a woman's beauty when she's not your wife. You're opening doors. You're opening doors towards you know, inappropriate attractions, okay? Women tend to be affected by those things. And women who are sensible and discreet can stay, stay, say straight to you, please stop complimenting me, okay? Because they know they can get carried away. You understand this? Reserve those words of compliment of the external beauty of a woman to your wife alone. You're beautiful, never say that to a woman that's not your wife if you're married. Never say that. And you know, one of our speakers at the conference, because I shared it in the conference, he, he was in our church that Sunday. And then after she heard, heard that message again, preached from the pulpit, he went to my daughter, my beautiful daughter, and she said, you are not beautiful. <laughs> and my daughter just laughed and giggled because she understood that she, he was trying to apply the lesson. He's married. Okay, do you understand that, okay? Affirmation, never say, forget to say thank you to your wife, even for the little things. Thank you, Aunt, for the great coffee, the great food. I really enjoyed it. I mean, those courtesies are so important to a woman because it makes her feel loved. That's affection. Affirmation and assurance. Listen to this. Most women fight when they are scared. They fight their husbands when they have fears and apprehensions that the husband is not trying to provide assurance for. I have so many stories, but anyway, just tell you this. Let me share this with you. A wife's nagging is often the product of her upbringing. If she grew up with a nagging mother, she will also tend to follow the same. But it is aggravated by the lack of attention, affection, and assurance from the husband. When the wife is not spending enough time with the woman, the woman will soon be a nagger because she's deprived of her basic need in that relationship, the need for attention. You understand that? When your wife is nagging you, it only means one thing. You're not giving her enough attention. If you want to stop her from nagging you, then give her the attention she needs. You understand that? You don't solve a problem by fighting the symptom. You solve the problem by solving the root cause of the symptom. Because if you just deal with the symptom, you will fight endlessly with your wife. Because there's no solution. Because you don't understand why she's nagging you. You understand that? Find out what's going on inside, why she's nagging you. Maybe a lack of attention, affection, or a lack of assurance from the husband. And okay. At the root of a woman's nagging or offensive behavior is usually an unmet need. She has an emotional need that you're not meeting. That's why she's beginning to nag you. Number two, she has a fear in her heart that you're not giving assurance to her about. That's why she will nag you. Three, there is an undisolved hurt with you that you never admitted and she's still hurt. You never apologize, she will nag you. And fourthly, 
If there's an unhealed post-trauma, she came from a family where her father adulterated and she was so hurt by that, she'll become overly suspicious of you, overly possessive of you, and will be, you know, always interpreting your relationship with women as becoming, uh, entering into an affair. She become over jealous because she's coming from a trauma in the past that she has not yet dealt with personally. And so the key there is for her to go to counseling and allow her to deal with that past trauma with her father so she doesn't project those feelings towards her husband. Okay? And finally, Ricardo Montalban. You know this guy? Star Trek? Fantasy Island? Okay? Does he look familiar to you? He also appeared in Spy Kids when he was already crippled, was on a wheelchair. Okay, that's Ricardo Montalban, the great Latin lover of Hollywood. The great lover. And I tell you, this man is a real man. He said, a great lover is a man who can captivate the love of one woman her entire life. A great lover is somebody who can make his wife fall in love with him for the rest of her life. That is a great lover.